What's an Asgardian to do when facing down the deadliest enemy that they've ever faced but their hammer containing the power of Thor has been shattered? Make a new weapon, one that takes the power of the cosmos itself to forge. But how much raw energy does it take to make a weapon worthy of the god of thunder and lightning? Before we begin, this video contains spoilers for Avengers Infinity War. If you haven't seen the film yet and you want to avoid any spoilers, turn back now. I'm serious. All right, about halfway into Infinity War, Thor, Rocket, and Groot travel to an ancient dwarven forge in space in order to craft a weapon that can take down Thanos or buff Grimace. However, they can't craft that awesome ax without a whole lot of heat energy that the forge harnesses from what Thor calls a neutron star at its center. But how much energy does a neutron star put out? And how much of that energy does it take to turn Uru into the ultimate weapon? Happen. First of all, our power source. What is a neutron star? Well, very basically, a neutron star is what happens when gravity beats the pressure that holds electrons and protons apart. Imagine that you had a massive star with 8 to 20 to 30 times the mass of our sun. We're not really sure on the back end of this limit here. While this star is alive, it will be fusing lighter elements together and radiating that energy out into the universe. Lighter elements like hydrogen and helium. And it will do this until the star runs out of this fuel. At that point, the star will have to start fusing heavier elements together until it gets to iron. Because of the high energy it takes to fuse iron together, the star won't use it as fuel. Instead, it will just accumulate iron in its core, making the core more and more massive. At some very specific limit, this increase in the gravitational force because of the bigger core will overcome the pressures that keep electrons from occupying the same energy states. When this happens, electrons and protons will collapse down and the star will collapse in on itself, forming neutrons in the exchange and creating a shock wave of particles that act to fling off the star's outer layers in a supernova, revealing just a dead, heavy, dense, awesome core. A neutron star. Neutron stars are constantly appearing in our science fiction because they are arguably the single most extreme objects in the universe. For example, neutron star material is the densest material, period. If my hammer here was made out of neutron star material, it would weigh more than every living thing on Earth put together. Aww. Neutron stars also have the strongest known magnetic fields. If you were to get even within a few thousand kilometers of a neutron star's 100 gigatesla magnetism, you would cease to be you. You would be reduced to a pile of atomic goo that once held human shape. Given their incredible densities and their relatively tiny radii, neutron stars are just a few kilometers wide, they also have unimaginably large surface gravities. If you somehow found yourself standing on the surface of a neutron star, because of its gravity, you would feel 200 billion times heavier, 200 billion G. If you could then somehow jump off of the surface just one foot or about a third of a meter into the air because of the acceleration due to its gravity, when you hit the ground, just jumping up that much, you would hit the ground at one million <laughs> meters per second. But of course you would never actually hit the ground because the gravity is so immense, the gravitational forces at your head and your feet would be different enough to pull you apart atom by atom and turn you into uh, spaghetti. You! Oh no! Ow, my eye! If you wanted an incredible weapon, then using the most severe objects in the universe is a decent idea. But how much energy can you get from a neutron star? Huh. I do need a haircut though. If you want to know how much power you can get from a celestial object like a star, then you want to know that star's luminosity. The science term, not the brain training program that doesn't work. 
Assuming that a star emits the whole spectrum of electromagnetic radiation into space like a perfect black body, you can get the total power or luminosity of that star by multiplying the star's surface area by a constant times its temperature in Kelvin to the fourth. And for most stars, like our sun, that is a lot. For example, the power rating for our sun is 383 yottawatts, trillions of times more power than the entire human species consumes. That's a yottawatts. Right after they form, neutron stars can be incredibly hot, millions of Kelvin. But because they are only a few kilometers across and because fusion inside them has stopped, they aren't as luminous as larger living stars. But put a sci-fi containment sphere and focusing ring around a neutron star to harness its energy as it appears the dwarves have done in Infinity War and you can still certainly light up a cosmic forge. From the papers and values that I could find, the average luminosity of a neutron star in the form of visible light and gamma rays and X-rays primarily is larger than you think. The average neutron star still puts out a quarter of the power that our sun does. But in Infinity War, not all of that power goes to the forge. If you divide the luminosity of a star by its surface area and multiply that by some time, you'll get the total energy outputted by that star based on how much of its surface area you can see. Chris Hemsworth is six foot three. Using his height for scale and assuming that the circular hatch he is opening to the surface of the neutron star is about the same diameter as the apparatus that he is using in Infinity War, and that hatch is open for the few minutes that Forger E-Tree mentions in the film, Peter Dinklage's character, then Thor may be letting through on the order of 200 million trillion joules of energy, more than the entire planet Earth uses in six months. <sighs> no! It's hot. If all of that went into melting a few ingots of the Asgardian material known as Uru, then it would truly be a magical metal. Wow, have not gotten a hang of that yet. It's new. No matter what the X-Men say every time, every metal has a melting point. The highest elemental metal melting point here on Earth is that of tungsten at 3,695 Kelvin. But it takes a specific amount of heat energy to get a hunk of tunk up to its melting point per unit mass, and then another little kick of extra energy per unit mass to get that hunk of tunk to actually melt called the enthalpy of fusion. For example, if you know the specific heat of tungsten and the enthalpy of fusion for tungsten, then the amount of energy it takes to melt a hundred kilograms of the stuff if it starts at room temperature is 63 million joules, about a third of a Thor lightning bolt, assuming that his lightning bolts are like our lightning bolts. Face floor! <laughs> Got it now. If Thor's new axe Stormbreaker here is made from Uru, then this fictional metal indeed has to be Epic. And that's because the 200 million trillion joules that we are assuming Thor lets into the forge from the surface of a neutron star is enough to melt 380 trillion kilograms of tungsten. This is more mass than the mass of every single person on Earth times a thousand. If it takes this amount of energy to just melt Uru, then it kind of makes sense in a weird sci-fi kind of way why a weapon imbued with this scale of energy would also bring with it the power of Pirate Angel. I mean Thor. But Thor is no pushover on his own. Remember that in this scene, he is standing right in the way of all the energy he is letting out from the surface of a neutron star. So assuming a surface area of Thor's rippling backside of one square meter, then standing in front of the energy that Thor is letting out for the amount of time that we're assuming is like standing in front of the world's most powerful laser for over an hour. And Thor withstands that. Do you know what would happen to you? 
The total amount of energy that we calculated to melt just a hunk of Uru like we see done in Infinity War is enough to vaporize everything but the skeleton of six Earths worth of people. 48 billion people. I regret nothing! So what does it take to forge Thor's new weapon from Avengers Infinity War? Well, if Asgardian Smiths really could harness the luminosity of neutron stars and somehow get around the strongest magnetic fields and surface gravities in the known universe, then it apparently takes more energy than humanity uses in six months pumped into an almost unimaginably resistant metal to make a Thanos smashing ax that can only be wielded by a man god who should have been vaporized down to his skeleton billions of times over by this process, but wasn't. <sighs> Considering these cosmically large numbers, of course you'd have to be worthy to wield this thing. <laughs> because science. See ya. S See ya. I'm not worthy. Hey, also in that scene, Thor is talking and breathing. In space, no one can hear you scream. That's because the air gets thrown out of your lungs very quickly and it freezes your airways as you go and there's no air in space so you can't make sounds. But he's, not only is he talking, he's also breathing. What? <sighs> like it's nothing. You don't have Asgardian air sacs in you. Do they? No. Thank you so much for watching, Luke. If you want more of me, you can go back to Nerdist.com and check out my Squatch, or you can go to Project Alpha at projectalpha.com and sign up for a free 30-day trial, because if you do, you will get this main show two days earlier than anyone else, and you'll feel great about it. Follow Because Science on social media here, and also me here as well.